Today, I'm going to tell you the fastest way to get relief from trigeminal neuralgia. And there's two types. So type one is unilateral, could be one side or the other, sudden, brief, shooting, stabbing. And it can reoccur like every two seconds up to two minutes, uh, twice a day, up to 200 times a day. So it can be very devastating. Type two is more achy, chronic, not intense, kind of always there. One of the big problems you're probably running into is doing a search on YouTube or Google to find good information on this topic. Because very recently with these new changes with Google, now it's just all medical. There's no alternatives, especially when you type in a medical condition, which, okay, fair enough. And even if we type in natural remedy for trigeminal neuralgia, we get the same thing, medical, medical, medical. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to find alternatives to medical. Before I kind of go into this topic, let's just take a look at what the top video says about trigeminal neuralgia. Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, we recently had a listener, as you know, contact us and ask us to do a program on trigeminal neuralgia. Mm. And we listened. We're paying attention. <laughs> and so if people want to hear about it, we're going to listen. We invited two of the world's experts on trigeminal to answer that inquiry. On trigeminal neuralgia. Oh, on trigeminal neuralgia to answer that inquiry. Thanks for listening. Joining us in studio are Mayo Clinic neurologist, Dr. Chris Bays, and neurosurgeon, Dr. Bruce Pollock. Welcome to the program. Okay, so that's not really giving me a lot of confidence in this video so far. And why do they have the comments off, right? I look at the comments a lot, especially when I'm researching videos. I want to know a lot more about the comments and what people are saying. But let's go back to this video. I just want to know what type of treatment that they do for this condition. Let's take a look at that. Assuming all that's come true and either the medicines have stopped working or you can't tolerate the medications, then we sort of go through the different surgical options that are available. Um, the best surgery that we have in terms of outcomes is where we go in and actually move the blood vessels away from the nerve. Um, it is a, a small craniotomy, uh, so we make a small opening behind the ear, and we don't go through any brain, but we work in these natural water sacs that we have to go down and see the, see the trigeminal nerve and mobilize a small artery off the nerve and then put some padding in to keep it away. Uh, the surgery is known as a microvascular decompression. Uh, it typically takes us about two hours, and the hospital stay is typically two days. But, but you have to go through the skull to get Yes, that. it yeah. is an open surgery. So the incision's behind the ear about an inch and a quarter. All right, so I need to get another opinion. I need to get more information about this topic, something that does involve medications and surgery. I wonder if there's anything else. How am I going to go about finding this? I'm just going to show you what I do. The first thing I do, number one, is I go to the authority on a lot of things, uh, Wikipedia. But I mainly go to Wikipedia to find out what they're recommending so I can go in the exact opposite direction. And I especially look at what they say that definitely does not work because chances are it probably works. So I do get a lot of great information with Wikipedia, um, but it's in the reverse direction. So the next thing I do is I look at animal research. You will find all sorts of great remedies and information for animals, because the thing with animals is that either it's going to work or it's not. There's not a lot of subjective things. You can't ask your pet dog, you know, how they feel about certain things. You have to create a change or they're not going to use it. And then the next thing I do is I look for um, what is the gold standard? What is the main treatment for a particular disorder? And I start looking at the um, mechanism, like how this drug actually works. What does it do? Does it inhibit an enzyme? What exactly does it do? So then I can actually look at other things like herbs and plants that might create a similar effect, but of course without the side effects. And then I'll do a patent search, right? I'll look at patents on this particular disorder or disease or problem in Europe, okay, or in some other country in relationship to something natural or an herb or something that I can get some clues on because what's really cool about patents is they summarize all the data and the background and the research that's on that particular topic that you'll never be able to find if you do a search. Now, I also will get a good understanding of the condition. And in this situation, uh, trigeminal neuralgia, there's definitely problems with the myelin sheath. So I will look deeply at anything related to what can affect myelin especially in the area of demyelinating uh, nerves. 
And by the way, myelin is just the coating around the nerve. It's a fat coating. And then what I'll do is I'll look at other factors, like is it seasonal? Does it come at a certain time of the year? Is it more in men than women? Because I want to know if estrogen could be more involved. At what age does a person usually get it? Is there anything that usually comes before this problem? Like, for example, a surgery, an injury, a stress event. Maybe it happens later in life or earlier. All of these factors give me clues. So let me share what I found about this condition. The first bit of information I found related to something called polyunsaturated fatty acids. There was some research done on rats, okay? So if you have a pet hamster or a gerbil or a rat, this might pertain to you. But this polyunsaturated fatty acid, you have two different kinds. You have the omega-3 fatty acids, okay, which they were using in high doses to get rid of inflammation in the nervous system and in the brain. But they were also looking at omega-6 fatty acids, the seed oils, which are not anti-inflammatory. In fact, they're pro-inflammatory. They create inflammation. They create a lot of oxidative stress and insulin resistance and a lot of problems. And these omega-6 oils, seed oils, can invade fatty membranes like the myelin sheath, whereas omega-3 fatty acids help build myelin sheath. But if you're consuming both at the same time, they compete with each other. The omega-3 is not going to work. So you must eliminate the omega-6 fatty acids out of the diet, and especially in the area of processed foods and all the different uh, oils in the salad dressing and the condiments and things like that. I'm talking about corn oil, soy oil, canola, cotton seed. Did you realize that an average person consumes between 400 to 700 calories of the seed oil every single day? This is insane. We are human guinea pigs just experimenting with this oil. And it does correlate with so many health problems, okay? The introduction of these oils, which are not vegetable oils. When you think about these oils, uh, none of them uh, relate to any vegetables that you eat on a regular basis. It's seed oils. I mean, how much corn do you have to crush to get certain amounts of oil and also the soybeans and the cotton seeds? So it's weird that they call them vegetable oils because they're really seed oils. Now, I found some other interesting data uh, relating to viruses. This is a pretty heavy duty association. In one research, they did um, experiments on cadavers that had this condition and they, they opened it up and they found these viruses that apparently make their home out of your ganglion, which is the kind of a nerve bundle, the, where the, uh, the trigeminal nerve originates from. So there are four primary viruses that they talked about with the most common one being a herpes virus HHV6. Next one being uh, like shingles, the varicella zoster, which is like a, the chicken pox virus. The next one is the Epstein-Barr virus, and then you also had a cytomegaloviruses. What's interesting about all of these viruses is they go in and out of remission. So they're called latent viruses. They can be reactivated, which does explain why trigeminal neuralgia can come and go based on various factors. One is stress. So I want to kind of just briefly go through all four of these viruses to, to tell you some of the other research I found as the potential remedy. Let's start with the HHV6, the herpes virus, okay? Because there's like 245 different herpes viruses. This one is, is more common. It can be other ones, but they're not as common. But I found a really good remedy for this. It's an extract from shiitake mushrooms, okay? And uh, I'll just give you the abbreviation, AHCC. But there's some interesting research to show that using that to help reduce pain from that virus and potentially even clearing out that virus. So what I'm doing now is just pointing you into a certain direction to do more research on. I'm not going to give you specific brands or doses and things like that because we don't know. Because there are multiple reasons why you might have this condition. It could be even from a tumor, which is very rare. It could be from physical injury. It could be from a surgery that you had in your sinuses. So you really want to look at all these factors too. Okay, now what about this uh, varicella zoster, this uh, like shingles virus? Um, vitamin D3 in high doses, like 50,000 IUs would be a really good thing. And I would add zinc to that because in order for vitamin D to work, you need zinc and you need magnesium as well. But vitamin D is a, a powerful anti-inflammatory and um, it's something that you can even get topically for shingles 
and it also works good on uh, sciatic pain and other types of pain and low back pain, but it can definitely help put this shingles virus back in remission. Now, what about Epstein-Barr virus? This is one that is really nasty because it can really make you tired, cause fibromyalgia. There is a lot of different remedies out there. I'm just gonna tell you from personal experience, for myself, and from working with a lot of patients, this is like 100% activated by stress. So you just have to find out what is stressing you out and figure out how you can reduce that stress. And that is probably the best advice I can give you on that virus. The cytomegalovirus, this is another one. I found some research on berberine. Yeah, berberine actually can help put this virus back in remission. I did find some other research on trigeminal neuralgia, specifically supporting that nerve tissue to drop inflammation. And I'll list the full name down below, but I'm just going to kind of give you the uh, initials of it. It's P-E-A slash Lutolin, which is a natural thing in a lot of different foods that you eat. And because these molecules are fairly big, you want to get it micronized or broken up into small particles. But it apparently is a very powerful neuroprotective anti-inflammatory. And then with the second compound, Lutolin, that adds the antioxidants because the first compound doesn't have that factor. But apparently this is something you can take orally uh, with some good results. Now, another remedy that I found some interesting research on is called DMSO, which has great anti-inflammatory properties. It's very, very penetrating. You can put some on your foot and you can just actually taste it within seconds. It's like you taste like a garlic taste to it. But DMSO has been used for a lot of different pain problems, pain syndromes. The only thing, it's, uh, it penetrates uh, the tissues pretty fast. So you wouldn't want to put it with something that's toxic. So for example, if you're trying to kill your rat with rat poisoning and it's on your hands and you put the, this DMSO on your hands, it's going to drive that poison right in your tissue. So you want to clean the area before you put it on that tissue. So like if you have, um, I don't know, makeup on your face or some type of skin lotion, clean that off then you can rub in that DMSO uh, wherever it originates. And there's been uh, some really fascinating research on this. It's been around for a long time for things uh, like phantom pain, um, post-operative, like you had a surgery, now you have pain. It's also good for post-traumatic type problems, if you had some injury, and trigeminal neuralgia. So in one study, which I'm going to put down below, 32 out of 37 people uh, experienced relief. And, uh, you know, you could literally combine that first remedy, the PEA slash Lutolin with the DMSO to drive that in deeper. I don't know. It's just an idea. It may work because anything you put with DMSO, it drives it in there, whether you do aloe vera or other types of things. Now we come to the technique I'm going to show you to dramatically reduce the pain very quickly. This technique doesn't fix the problem permanently, but it can greatly reduce the pain very fast, okay? And I use this in practice. It was very effective. It works probably in 70% of the cases. The type of cases that it doesn't work on, if it's really, really viral related and there's like this active outbreak or infection, it will not work on that. But it works really good on if you had some type of um, injury or post-surgery so the whole theory of it is you're breaking up this uh, brain circuitry that it keeps uh, causing pain. It just keeps going and going. All right, there's an amazing technique that I'm going to show you right now to drop the pain. It doesn't correct it, but at least it'll drop the pain pretty fast. And here's what you do. First of all, you isolate where the pain's coming from. Let's just pretend it's on the left side, like right here, okay? What you do is you, you're going to be pressing on the mirror image on the opposite side. The key is to mirror image to get the exact epicenter of wherever this is on the good side. Don't mess on the bad side, just press on the good side and you're gonna massage it. Now, the way that you know you have the exact correct spot to press on is it'll be very tender, it will. The good side will be tender, actually probably more tender than this side. So you find it and you just kind of massage it for you know about a minute, okay? And then notice the bad side. If it's there at all, it's going to drop the pain. So let's say, for example, you did this and it moved down. Okay, then you just go down. 
and then all of a sudden, oh wow, that, that got rid of that, but now it moved back over here. And you keep doing that until this is manageable. This is something you could do through the day as you start using some of these other remedies to help yourself. But I've used this in practice for years. It really came in handy. And it's not something they teach you in school. In fact, they teach you the opposite. They'll teach you to put therapy on this side, you know, mess with this nerve. No, work on the, the good side. You'll see, it'll work. Just try it out. Now, if you're not on my list to receive uh, my newsletter on all sorts of unfiltered content on my website, I put that link down below too because I have a lot of cool things I want to share with you that unfortunately I can't put on YouTube. So click the link down below and I will see you on the other side.